So how do you find out? Well, it's a couple of things we can do. And we can listen to the horse at exercise. So we can either get someone to ride the horse at speed past, past us, or we can lunge the horse, ask the horse to canter or gallop in a circle around us. And what we're doing is we're listening for an abnormal sound as the horse inhales. So that will tell us yes or no, there's a sound, but it's not that sensitive a test. Not all horses with recurrent laryngeal neuropathy, especially in the early stages, will make an abnormal noise. And not all um, noises are problematic. So that's a good starting point, an exercise test, but it's not very sensitive or specific. So what we would like to do is, is look at the larynx and evaluate how well the horse can abduct it, especially the left side. That's easiest to do at rest. So we can just put an endoscope up the horse's nose and look at the airway, but it's not that sensitive. Not all conditions are going to be prevalent at rest. The horse larynx might look perfectly normal at rest, but it turns out in exercise, there is a problem there with abduction. Likewise, we can listen to the horse exercise and then lunge it. So if we hear an abnormal noise during exercise and then, and then look at the horse's larynx, we may see what's going on. But again, we'll, we'll miss some problems, not all, laryngeal problems are evident at rest or immediately after an exercise. So ideally we'd look at the horse's larynx while it's exercising. So that was considered to be very desirable, but until the technology kind of caught up in the last 10 to 15 years, it wasn't a test that was easy to do. So if we look at the respiratory tract of a horse with an endoscope, we'll find it's something you do a lot. It's very straightforward. It can be done either out on the yard where the horse lives, on the gallops or in the hospital. In terms of RVN involvement, um, often you'll be either the person passing the endoscope or the person driving it or gathering data. And you're also responsible for the care and maintenance of the equipment and the hygiene associated with it. It's a procedure that's commonly done. Most horses don't mind it. It's not painful. Um, but we do try and avoid sedating them to do it because if we sedate them, we're going to alter their muscle tone in the airway and we may make them look better or worse than they actually are. So we'll avoid sedation. So you need to be careful and pay attention, particularly as the person who's examining the airway, if they're looking down the endoscope, they're only partially sighted and they're more vulnerable to being hit by the horse than they normally would be. So if you have a look at the lecture notes on this, I've talked through in a bit of detail about how to assist with an endoscopic procedure. It's generally fairly straightforward. Just to show you um, the type of equipment used, this is a, um, an ex-human colonoscope, so a one meter long endoscope, widely used to examine the upper airway of the horse. They'll often come in these protective cases. And the endoscope itself contains multiple fiber optic, optic cables, so tiny glass cables that transmit light from a light source down this flexible tube and out the end to generate an image. The image goes back up the tube and into the eyepiece where it can be viewed either on a screen or by looking down the eyepiece at the larynx. The fiber optic cables made of glass are delicate, so we've got to be careful not to break or crunch the endoscope or damage it because we get, every time we break a cable, we get a little black dot appear on the image like a pixel. So it's important to handle these items of equipment carefully. Um, these carry cases are useful. They protect the endoscope, but if you bring them out on yards, they're going to get full of dust and straw and dirt eventually, um, snot, blood, whatever else, saliva can end up on them. So it is important that you keep both the endoscope and the case clean. There's no point putting the clean endoscope back into a dirty case. So some, what I used to use in practice was um, you could buy a roll of just plastic sheeting. You could pull over the endoscope before you put it into the box each time. So it kept it nice and clean. In terms of light sources then, um, you want to be able to use this out and about in a stable. So there's these older type of light sources about the size of um, a small briefcase, hangs over your shoulder. Um, or these new ones on the left, that's an, um, an LED light source. You can see how small it is. It just clicks on to the um, light input here on the, the metal rod on the end of the endoscope. And this, this one is battery operated. So you can charge the batteries either by plugging them into a power um, socket, or you can also get these in-car chargers, which is handy for ambulatory vets. So you can see what your practice has and figure out how to ensure the vets out on the road have the equipment they need. That's the light source turned on. So you can see it emits a very um, bright white light. It's an LED light, so it doesn't heat, which is useful. It won't um, burn you if you handle it. And then that's it attached to the endoscope. So you can see I'm holding the endoscope in my, in my hand. The free black flexible tip on the left-hand side is a bit that goes into the horse's nostril. You can see there's measurements on it in centimeters, so 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters, and so on. Then there's the 
LED light source is attached to the light input here at the bottom of the image. And then the top right of the image is the eyepiece you look through to examine the horse's airway. And then to the right of that, these knobs control the tip of the endoscope, the part that goes into the horse's nose. You can steer up and down and left and right by turning those knobs to visualize what part of the area you want to view. So it takes a bit of practice. That's just showing you the free end of the tube that goes into the horse's airway. You can see the light being emitted there through two little ports. There's also um, the camera port and then there's a, an opening through which you can pass biopsy brushes or um, lavage tubes and so on if you want to say take a sample of liquid from the airway or infuse something in there. So that's the biopsy channel. This is a picture of the procedure being performed. You can see this um, is the race horse having its upper airway examined. And you can see the level of restraint required. This animal has wearing a head collar and lead rope. The person on the, on the right of the image in the calf is restraining the animal. So they've got one hand on the horse's face. They're holding the lead rope in the, in the other hand, which is out of shot. Then the person doing the procedure is on the right hand side of the horse. They're using one hand to pass the endoscope up the nostril. And they're using their other hand to twist the knobs and examine and visualize the airway. This is one of the few instances where we'll have the person doing the procedure and the person doing the restraint on opposite sides of the animal. If you stand side by side, you tend to get in each other's way. Bear in mind as well, the person looking through the endoscope is partially sighted. If this horse suddenly swings its head or objects, this person may not see it coming and they may get hit with more easily than they normally would. So even an experienced horse person is more prone to injury during this procedure. They're relying on the person holding the horse to watch out for them. And if the horse goes to move, the person doing the restraint should keep the horse um, safely away from the, from the operator if possible. Um, a colleague of mine fractured his skull doing this. He was scoping a horse in a small stable. The horse got a fright and threw its head and, and hit him on the side of his head with the side of the horse's head. And it knocked him backwards and he fell and hit his head off the wall behind him and fractured his skull. Thankfully, he was all right, but it was a nasty incident and just a reminder of the importance of safety. As I say, 99.9% .9 of horses don't mind this. It's not painful, but the odd one doesn't like it, doesn't like it and can object. So just pay attention. I'd also recommend doing the procedure in as large a room as possible. If you're in a very small, confined stable with a wall right behind you, there's nowhere to go. So try and use a fairly open space. The other thing that's helpful is if you can have the space with a little bit dimly lit, if it's very, very bright and sunny, it's harder to visualize the airway. So in, indoors in a large stable is probably, probably ideal. Um, again, about 20 years ago, people switched from these endoscopes with the eyepiece to newer ones where the image appears on a computer screen. So these are video endoscopes. They avoid the problem of this photo where the person visualizing the image is unsighted. Um, but they are a bit less portable. There's more to set up and there's more to break. So people still use the uh, eyepiece ones for out and about on calls. The other thing to bear in mind too is that with these um, video endoscopes, you can easily record the image or you can take photographs so you can keep them for your records. You can send them on to other people for a second opinion. So that, that can be useful. You can also show the client um, with the eyepiece, you might find something abnormal and show the client, but all they see is pink stuff. Whereas with the um, video endoscope, you can pause the image and you can show them exactly what you're talking about. So that, that's helpful in, in my experience. Um, I've mentioned how endoscopes are easy to break and they're also quite expensive. So a couple of things to bear in mind. We don't want to um, crunch the flexible tube that goes into the patient. That's where the fiber optic cables are. We want to gently curl that or bend it rather than having it go around 90 degree bends. So you can see this is a storage system on the wall of a building where there's a little hanger that the endoscope handle and controls um, slot into. Then there's a piece to secure the, um, the light source against the wall. And then there's these little supporting brackets that the tube of the endoscope is pushed through to support them and stop them kinking or bending. And these gray supports, they're actually made of bits of um, pipe insulation from a plumber's supplies. So you can just buy them, say, in Woody's screw them onto the wall, cut a line in them, and then they'll hold the endoscopes for you. They're nice and soft, so they won't, they won't damage them. You can also see here at the top of the image, that little nozzle sticking out at a 45 degree angle. That's the cap that covers the biopsy channel. And so if you want to take a biopsy or a fluid sample from the airway, we can pass um, a forceps or a catheter down through that opening and flush in saline, for example, or suck back out body fluids. And then this instrument hanging on the right-hand side of the image it's a long flexible wire with 
um, a three ringed handle at the end that's a biopsy forceps so you can pass that down through the biopsy port on the endoscope and take small tissue samples of any abnormal tissues you might detect during the examination so familiarize yourself with the equipment your practice has and you can work out how best to use it right just to mention a few other ways we can use um, endoscopes treadmill endoscopy until recently this was the only way you could examine a horse's airway while at full speed so you had to buy a treadmill that could travel it up to um, 40 miles an hour. It had to be durable enough for the horse to be able to use it. You had to train the horse to use it. It took three or four days in many cases before you could exercise the horse maximally on it and record um, their airway at speed. It was the only way to diagnose some conditions that, only, that are only apparent at maximal exercise. But well, it's an expensive process needs a big setup, specialized equipment. It's also, it's also a bit dangerous. The horse is galloping at full speed, so if they trip or fall on the endoscope, on the, on the treadmill, there is an automatic sh shut off, but the animal may still hurt themselves. And also, if the horse falls off the treadmill, it can injure people around it. So be very careful to never stand behind a horse on a treadmill. Also, their shoes can fly off. So there's a, a photograph a colleague of mine took from the a treadmill unit in Bristol University. They have wooden doors into the unit and one day they were galloping a horse in the treadmill and one of its shoes flew off and embedded itself in the, in the wooden door. It's quite an impressive photograph. So just keep that in mind. It is interesting though to see them and most horses enjoy using them and you can readily train them to, to gallop on the, on the treadmill. Um, and it's quite impressive. You, you want to get them going at maximal effort to, in some cases. So you can really see how much effort they put in um, while, they're, while they're doing it. But because of the expense and the kind of hassle associated with them, they've now fallen out of use with the invention in the last sort of decade and a half of endoscopes that can be worn by the horse while they're going out about their normal daily business. Um, so this is an example of an older model where you can see this little light endoscope clipped onto the horse's nose. It's stiffer than a normal endoscope, so it stays in place while the horse is galloping. The jockey is wearing a transmitter that sends the image from the endoscope to the receiver, which the vet here is holding on the ground. Um, problem with this design was if the jockey fell off they're going to land on the transmitter and that can hurt them or injure them so newer models now tend to have the, a smaller transmitter pack which you can attach to the horse's saddle cloth so if the jockey comes off they're not going to be at increased risk of injury um, these are really revolutionised it's made it very easy to now examine a horse's airway at, at work or at full speed so it, problems can be detected um, much more easily than training the horse to, to go on the treadmill so a video here, I'll turn the sound down again. This is a horse um, being galloped on the race course after racing one day, and she's wearing the dynamic endoscope. Um, so the jockey, this is again the older model, the jockey has the a transmitter on their back, and you can see the horse is just going about her normal business. From her point of view, this is a normal piece of exercise. She's not aware of the fact that she's, she's having her airway examined. But it does allow you to exercise the animal under normal conditions. From her perspective, as I say, this is what she does every day. Whereas with the treadmill, there's no jockey on them and they hold their head in a different position. So again, we found another advantage to this system is that the animal is going about its normal routine in its normal, normal way and it allows us to detect problems at a greater degree of accuracy.